Bow. What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and I'm back with another episode of Ask Brand Man, where every Wednesday I answer your questions from the comment section below. So keep those questions coming. It's the network. Now, today I got a question from Six Skills who says, Who helps you get sales, streams, and develop fans? Now, to really take this question in, because it's pretty general, I think you should focus on the manager. But before I get into why the manager is critical in this particular space, all those sales, streams, and developing fans, you have to really understand how to choose the right end manager, how to look at managers, and know that it's a real relationship. So if you don't get this that I'm about to go through right now, you're possibly giving a good portion of your business, 10, 15, 20% of your business to somebody that's not even right for the role. So this is how you look at managers and this is gonna give you an idea of how you share your business with them, all right? Now, number one, there's a role manager, production manager, a tour manager, and tech manager, right? We, we split it into two categories, your two, tour show in terms of responsibilities and then your business, general business responsibilities when we're talking about management. Well, if you're a big artist, because we're going to start at the bird side view so you can know what it typically grows out to and then how do we hone it in for an indie artist or somebody who's just starting out, right? Role, production, tour, tech, technical, those are all different roles and somebody like Drake has a manager for every single one of those categories, right? A technical manager, this is like set design, tour, that's all your logistics for your tour, your tour, and they're coordinating with the road manager who's handling things on the ground that they're closest to you in terms of um, a lot of the things that they're, they're doing while you're on the road. Then you have the production person who's working on literally the production, right, um, of your shows. So that's something that you probably don't need early on, right? pretty clear on that so don't get too worried over there right a lot of people will have a sense of a road manager but really the road manager oftentimes it, it doubles as one of the business roles which is the day-to-day -day manager all right that's a little messy but you should be able to read it right and then you have these other categories of an actual business manager and then you have a some people call it a music manager some people call it an artist manager but that's the that's the one that people typically just say this is a manager it's just a general role then you have a booking agent right and the booking agent falls under that category because when we go back to who gets you sales streams and developing these fans now let's break down into these roles because this is more growth these guys over here or that those responsibilities that's handling something that you already have these are the people who help you grow and maintain and sustain so let's check this out your day-to-day -day manager this is the this is the person who's with you all the time. Yo, wake up. A lot of times people look at it as a, as a babysitter, right? Yo, wake up or yo, we got this appointment here, handling some admin work or going to go pick something up to make sure that the studio vibe is right. You know, are there some rellos in this thing or do, what do we what do we have going on? They're making sure your vibe is right, right? Um, in, in many ways, I don't want to uh, seem like I'm, I'm not looting the, the impact of a day-to-day -day manager, but it's, it's a really a glue guy. They make it, they're making sure stuff gets done on a ground level and making sure the artist is comfortable. That's who makes sure the artist is comfortable to do what they want to do and or need to do versus focusing on uh, things outside of, you know, creating. Right. Oftentimes, that's how it gets looked at. Then you have the business manager. This is your money, your money. All right, um, your money and oftentimes this person might actually be a c accountant. It could be a firm that you're using, right? And you're a, uh, you have an account manager who's your business manager. There's different ways to flip this, but I'm going to get something into something really important uh, pretty soon. Right, the booking agents, obviously, right? They're the person who helps you get booked, right? Because there's agencies who specialize in that as a business, right? But everything comes down to the music and artist manager in terms of how people view it. All of these different roles and responsibilities, people usually just look at as the music artist manager, right? This is my manager. Oh, they should do all these things. I'm expecting all these things. And that's not necessarily fair to a manager. And this is where a lot of disconnect comes, comes from, right? So here's how, what you got to understand. Number one, your music manager 
your actual manager, right, should not be doing business manager responsibilities, right? Uh, that's your you don't want that person being that close to the money in that in that particular way or handling all of your money, right? Now you're just literally giving them everything. You got your own taxes that they're, they're handling all the money, telling you what you should be getting, and it, it just becomes. A, uh, a conflict of interest in a lot of ways. At the beginning, with a little bit of ad man and, and, and some of those things, it might make a little bit sense in the beginning just because you're running super lean. But as quickly as possible, you need to have some kind of differentiation of, yo, know, who's actually handling the business and making sure they keep track, right? Um, the, the uh, what word is it? The bookkeeping, right? Like how much money's coming in, who's owed what money, all that type of stuff. That should be a business manager, not a music manager, all right? Now, with that being said, again, the music manager gets a lot of flack because artists are expecting all these things from this guy. And starting early on, the hustlers, they will be all these things. It just is what it is. However, this is what things need to actually look like long term because this is where people mess up. Now, with the music manager, the regular manager, a lot of those guys, they're day-to-day -day managers. And what I mean by this is you're hiring somebody or you're work partnering with somebody and you're giving them a percentage of, of your business when long-term, their value might not be any more than a day-to-day -day manager. And why is this? Well, if they're just starting out, they might not have the connections. And when you get to a certain level, right, in terms of connections, the um, the the actual skill set to know how to close deals, find sponsors, where do certain things go down, and even what's the timeline to make sure certain things happen within, it ends up becoming, now we just have a general manager term, right? And that guy that you had at the beginning well, I'll just say this is square one. He ends up going here, right? And this is for the best. A lot of times there's a breakup that happens when this guy comes in, right? And there's another manager. But in the in a lot of the great working scenarios, what happens is, yo, we start off together. Now he's the day-to-day -day manager. So I, I shouldn't be giving this guy who doesn't have experience 20% of my business, 15% of my business, right? We're growing and we're getting into this career together. You're helping me, right? But... At the end of the day, I'm going to have to start splitting with other people. And I need to make sure that money is there because in a great relationship. This guy, in a lot of ways, begins to mentor that person in some ways. Right. So the day to day manager will cut his teeth being the road manager, getting all this up idea of how the business actually works because they're with you all the time and they're going through the business with you. And a lot of these managers started here. But when you're trying to rise in the game and you don't want to take forever, you, you can't rely on this one person. You just can't. All right. You, you oftentimes need to find, OK, what's another situation, a greater situation where they'll be able to help me elevate. All right. It, it just is what it is because this person is going to know how to do certain things with labels. This no person already going to have brand connections, industry connections, um, just all types of knowledge and even a sense of system that they work within. So that's one thing in terms of why you need to uh, not be so so easy to give out how much you whatever your percentages is. Here's a bonus manager because today, today, traditionally, this is, didn't work. Right. But a bonus manager is your marketer a lot of times people didn't but before people didn't look at marketers even as having a role but once the they just thought the manager right the manager was doing more sales back in the day because i'm making a relationship with the labels i'm making relationships with all these people directly once the internet happened, once indies started to have a lot more of their own platforms that became in control, marketing became more of a farce, a serious thing on a level that was beyond, hey, what marketing can the label do for me, right? Now, you can go to a marketing agency and possibly have some kind of management agreement because a lot of these management companies are essentially just marketers and know how to move online and digitally. So if you could find a really good digital marketer, that's a good person to start off with as your manager as well. Right. If you're not, if you, 
if, if you're the whole day to day and you just learn cutting your teeth because you go on the road or on the, um, you're doing tours and things like that, that's still great. Right. But one of the fastest ways for those of you who are managers or want to be managers to get your value is to learn marketing, digital marketing as fast as possible and then bring that value to that artist. In that way, artists, that's what you want to find. Right. Still, when we get to the upper level, there are people who hustle and learn fast and they're able to they're, they're able to grow into this role. But it's very rare because everybody need some level of insights that you can't get unless you start connecting with these people. So they might find some mentors that are the big time managers and they have that type of experience to guide them along the way. Or you are going to have to find a direct person to actually be a part of your business. They're a manager. And still, even that marketer is going to have to fall, not maybe into a day-to-day -day type role, but some type of role that allows them to continue to work for you. But... They're going to um, need to get some learnings from that other manager guy. Now, this is another thing, though. <sighs> a lot of times, just like any relationship, people get into relationships and, and have completely different expectations of how they should work out. You saw me list those roles before. All right. Now, all those roles are very real things. Like six skills, he said, who helps you get sales? Right. Who helps me get streams? Who helps me develop fans? And if you're expecting the wrong thing from the wrong person, then you're going to be unhappy. They're probably going to be unhappy. You have some managers who are really good at this marketing thing. You have some managers who are really good at moving and shaking and, you know, like just just making stuff happen from a sense of finding you connections and getting you in certain rooms. But they're not good at any kind of digital marketing. Right. They don't really understand anything else. Right. Um, and then you have a lot of those day to day managers who will ride for you and do whatever, but they just don't have the business capacity or the or the insight to really help you grow in out from your business side of your career or from your um, from your fan base side of your career. So with that being said, you have to be clear on that and you have to push consistently to make the manager be clear on that and what they want to do, because there's managers right who don't like sales. Right. And if you don't like sales as a manager, then at this end of the day, then you probably shouldn't have but so much connection in terms of the manager who has a percentage. If I'm getting the percentage, you should only begin get but so much of a percentage as a manager if you're not willing to bring in sales for an artist. That's just the reality of the situation. Right. But that's cool. Or, or you are able to really grow them from a marketing standpoint and bring in that 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 fan base. Right. So if you can't be tied to any of those results, then how do I justify paying you, right, a percentage, right, which is more of a commission based agreement? Maybe it should be something more fixed and I pay you the same type of deal. We hear we hear percentages um, from a traditional business rate, but we don't have to stick to those rules. You can hire somebody just like a regular job and they have a salary. There are p p people there are plenty of people all right, who <laughs> who run entire like million dollar, a hundred million dollar lines of business for companies and they're making five hundred thousand dollars a year. Right. That's a that's a relatively small percentage of one hundred million, three hundred million dollars. But that's just a normal thing in the marketplace where for some reason in music, we believe that it has to be 10 percent. So if you make one hundred million dollars, this person makes ten million dollars. That doesn't have to be. There's plenty of people who are working a regular job who are working and, and controlling larger than that. Right. And are getting paid less than 10 million. Right. right? That would be happy to be paid a million or just be happy to pay five hundred thousand dollars a year salary. And I and I don't buy the whole argument that I have to be inspired. Right. So I need a cut of the business. Just like if, if I work more, I should get more. There's like in a sales company, right? Commission is a very real thing, and that's a, a relationship that a lot of people are used to. But there's a lot of people who don't work on that. A lot of people work their ass off at their job, right, and continue to grow it, and they're killing it, but they get paid salary, right? And they're trying to grow, and they want to get paid more over the years, right? And and you do want to find new opportunities, but that also allows you to one keep more on the table to reinvest back in your business in other ways versus just always looking at a percentage. That's a deeper conversation for another day. Oh, I don't want to go get too much deeper in that. The point of this video again is 
understanding all the roles I said before, right? Then when you have your manager, especially if you're starting off, know that this guy probably isn't going to be the guy that takes you to the promised land in most cases. If, if y'all starting off together and he's brand new, this guy is probably going to evolve to more of a day to day manager. Right? If y'all are rolling successful where he's continuing to learn, get the business. But so you can accelerate and don't mess up a lot of things. You're going to have to find another manager. All right. But if y'all can get that agreement and understanding starting off, then you can really talk about what that looks like. You can you can really avoid this person resenting you or feeling like, oh, so he thinks that other person is better than me or, or they're or they're switching up. The, the right relationships won't be ruined by that, but it always helps this um, to avoid that if you understand that from just ground zero. So know that and then know that the roles of your manager actually can entail getting you sales, getting you streams, developing fans, all that stuff. Right. Traditionally, it was an even deeper stake in that. But now this might look like, hey, I know how to find the right marketer. If I can't do the marketing, I know how to find the right marketing, which is a huge, huge asset for the managers who know, yo, I know how to go find this other thing and filter to find the right marketer. Right. I know how to go find and um, anything that complements what I already do, because you have to build a team and a manager who tries to do everything is in the, is going to end up like wasting the time. Right. It's, it's going to it's going to feel like you're saving money front on, on the on the front end. But long term it's, it's not going to really work out. It just is what it is, because this stuff takes a lot of people right when you get to certain levels but even if it's not a lot of people in a sense of this massive team it takes a lot of different skill sets and the amount of time to do each skill set well even for somebody who has the ability to do each of them is just not possible all right i have to spend one time uh, a lot of my time in our business on a lot of things that i can do very well when there's some other things i can do very well that I can't do well because I have to focus on these other things. And that's what it becomes to be uh, feel like as you start to grow. Right. So those are a few things, particularly in management. And that's how they also can integrate to sales. Hey, booking agent and booking manager that sells the tour. Right. They, they, they sell and, and, and put you on shows. The fan base. There's a lot of managers who actually grow your fan base. Right. If not, you have to find a marketer to do so. But that manager manager is off. In times the one who can best analyze a lot of these things or help you analyze a lot of these things and then let me see streams i mean that's 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 a subset of marketing right and that's a byproduct there's so many of these roles this is such a deep category we'll probably spend more time on it maybe with some managers or something like that but the <laughs> management is music management is something that is going to evolve massively over the next five years and the artists who can get ahead of the game knowing that yo this is how you look at this situation versus going by the traditional model that does not work in today's model you'll win you'll have a happier manager right y'all have a more fluid relationship and you'll be able to better na navigate the indie space as you grow to then have a system that can then scale out when you actually blow up right but most people build systems that you get all these situations, you leave their manager or this artist switched up on me. They had a, a situation where the expectations and the system that was worked out just completely did not apply to a, a, a bigger level. So they had to leave their old situation because the team didn't understand. If you figure that out at the beginning, you don't have to go do that later. All right. So that's it for this video. I know it was a long winded explanation in terms of management and six skills question, but management is something that artists do not understand enough based on the amount of bad situations uh, artists are hitting me up about um, that I've heard again and again and again. So that's the answer to today's Ask Brand Man. Just another episode who we're only going to answer one question because of the length of it. However, keep those questions coming. I got a lot more of these coming soon and a lot of cool news that y'all will love to know about. Other than that, if you like this video, go ahead to the like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.